If the action is considered a small claims case or covered by the rules and summary procedure, MDCs have jurisdiction. If the action is incapable of pecuniary estimation, it is the RTC that has jurisdiction. If the action is a real action, the assessed value is the basis of jurisdiction. So, when we talk about totality rule, it is a test of jurisdiction based on the total amount of claims. However, this only applies if the case does not fall under other circumstances where the jurisdiction is clearly determined. Again, for example, a forcible entry case, obviously, is within the jurisdiction of the MTC. An annulment of judgment of the MTC is clearly within the RTC's jurisdiction. The court with jurisdiction over action publiciana and action reinvindicatoria depends on the assessed value of the property. So, when is there a need to use the totality rule? Under Section 33, BP 129, there is a portion there which provides that where there are several claims or causes of actions between the same or different parties embodied in the same complaint, the amount of the demand shall be the totality of the claims in all the causes of action, irrespective of whether the causes of action arose out of the same or different transactions. Under the rules of court provision on the joinder of causes of action, a party may in one pleading assert, in the alternative or otherwise, as many causes of action as he may have against an opposing party, provided that where the claims in all the causes of action are principally for recovery of money, the aggregate amount claimed shall be the test of jurisdiction. This provision presupposes that the different causes of action which are joined accrue in favor of the same plaintiff or plaintiffs and against the same defendant or defendants and that no misjoinder of parties is involved. The issue of whether claims shall be lumped together is determined by paragraph B of section 5 of rule 2 of the rules of court. This paragraph embodies the totality rule as exemplified by Section 33 of BP 129, which states, among others, that where there are several claims or causes of action between the same or different parties embodied in the same complaint, the amount of the demand shall be the totality of the claims in all the causes of action, irrespective of whether the causes of action arose out of the same or different transactions. Okay, take note that if there is one plaintiff against one defendant, the provisions of Section 5, Rule 2, allow a party to assert in one pleading as many causes of action as he may have against an opposing party provided he does not join special civil actions or those subject to special rules. What about in a case where there are several plaintiffs or defendants or in other words there are several parties the rule provides that there can only be a joinder of action or joinder of causes of action when there is compliance when with, with the rule on joinder of parties and that requires same transaction or series of transactions the totality rule does not apply in this case fausto versus multi agri forest and community development cooperative GR number 213939, October 12, 2016. The Supreme Court held that the totality of claims rule applies only when there are several claims or causes of action between the same or different parties embodied in the same complaint, in which case the total amount of the claims shall be determinative of the proper court which has jurisdiction over the case. The instant case, however, does not call for the application of the rule since there are five complaints each pertaining to a distinct and separate claim not exceeding 200,000 pesos. The petitioner's act of lump lumping to get all together the amount of the claims in all of the complaints and arguing that the total amount of 1,216,342 pesos and 91 centavos 
exceeds the jurisdictional amount that pertains to the MTCC is a gross misinterpretation of the provision. Why? Because there are five complaints. Totality of claims rule applies only when there is only one complaint. Example of joinder of causes of action, totality of money claims. Okay, D is the debtor of C for 350,000 pesos due on January 5, 2017. D likewise owes C 350,000 pesos due on February 13, 2017. Both debts are evidenced by distinct promissory notes. D has not paid the debts despite demand. Each debt is a separate cause of action because each is the subject of a different transaction. However, under the rule on joinder of causes of action, C may file a single suit against D for the collection of both debts, despite the claims being actually separate causes of actions and having arisen out of different transactions. In case C decides in favor of a joinder, the suit shall be filed where? In the RTC because the total amount of the debts is within the court's jurisdiction. Under the rules, when the claims in all the causes of action are principally for the recovery of money, the aggregate amount claimed shall be the test of jurisdiction. This situation follows the so-called Totality, totality test for purposes of jurisdiction. When we talk about totality rule in joinder of causes of action, there are exclusions, meaning these items are not included in the computation of the amount to determine which court has jurisdiction. What are these items? Under BP 129, Section 19, Paragraph 8, on the jurisdiction of the RTC, there is a portion there which states that in all other cases in which the demand exclusive of interest, damages of whatever kind, attorney's fees, litigation expenses, and costs. Also in section 33, paragraph 1 of the same law on the jurisdiction of the MTC, there is a provision which provides exclusive of interest, damages of whatever kind, attorney's fees, litigation expenses, and costs. The exclusion of the term damages of whatever kind in determining the jurisdictional amount under Section 19, Paragraph 8 and Section 33, Paragraph 1 of BP 129 as amended applies to cases where the damages are merely incidental to or a consequence of the main cause of action. However, in cases where the claim for damages is the main cause of action or one of the causes of action, the amount of such claim shall be considered in determining the jurisdiction of the court. Damages merely incidental. Example, P sued A in the RTC Manila to recover the following sums. 200,000 pesos on an overdue promissory note. 80,000 pesos on the purchase price of a computer. 150,000 pesos for damages to his car. and. 100,000 pesos for attorney's fees and litigation expenses. Question. Can A move to dismiss the case on the ground that the court has no jurisdiction over the subject matter? The answer is A cannot move for the successful dismissal of the case. Under the totality rule, the aggregate amount of the claim under the causes of action joined is 430,000 pesos an amount well within the jurisdiction of the RT, RTC. So 430,000 pesos is the sum of the 200,000 pesos overdue promissory note, 80,000 pesos purchase price of the computer, and 150,000 pesos damage to the car. The claim for attorney's fees and litigation expenses and costs are not to be included in determining the jurisdictional amount because these damages are merely incidental. How about a complaint primarily to recover damages? In an action for damages, the court which has jurisdiction 
is determined by the total amount of damages claim. Here, the amount of damages are not excluded in the computation since in the first place, the action is for damages. Under Administrative Circular Number 09-94, the court declared that where the claim for damages is the main cause of action or one of the causes of action, the amount of such claim shall be considered in determining the jurisdiction of the court. In other words, where the complaint primarily seeks to recover damages, all claims for damages should be considered in determining which court has jurisdiction over the subject matter of the case, regardless of whether they arose from a single cause of action or several causes of action. In the case of Santa v. Claraval, GR No. 173915, February 22, 2010, the facts of the case are as follows. The complaint filed in civil case number 5794-R is for the recovery of damages for the alleged malicious acts of petitioners. The complaint principally sought an award of moral and exemplary damages as well as attorney's fees and litigation expenses for the alleged shame and injury suffered by respondent by reason of petitioners' utterance while they were at a police station in Pangasinan. So the issue in this case is, should the amount of moral damages prayed for in the complaint be the sole basis for determining which court has jurisdiction or should the total amount of all the damages claimed, regardless of kind and nature, such as exemplary damages, nominal damages, and attorney's fees, etc., be used? What do you think? In this regard, the Supreme Court held that Administrative Circular Number 09-94 is instructive. The exclusion of the term damages of whatever kind in determining the jurisdictional amount applies to cases where the damages are merely incidental to or a consequence of the main cause of action. However, in cases where the claim for damages is the main cause of action or one of the causes of action, the amount of such claim shall be considered in determining the jurisdiction of the court. It is settled that jurisdiction is conferred by law based on the facts alleged in the complaint since the latter comprises a concise statement of the ultimate facts constituting the plaintiff's causes of action. According to the Supreme Court, based on the allegations of the complaint, respondent's main action is for damages. Hence, the other forms of damages being claimed by the respondent, such as exemplary damages, attorney's fees, and litigation expenses, are not merely incidental to or consequences of the main action, but constitute the main or the primary relief prayed for in the complaint. Considering that the total amount of damages claimed was 420,000 pesos, it was correct to rule that the RTC had jurisdiction over the case. In Mendoza v. Soriano case, cited in Santa v. Claraval, it was held that in cases where the claim for damages is the main cause of action or one of the causes of action, the amount of such claim shall be considered in determining the jurisdiction of the court. In the, in the said case, respondents claim of 929,000 pesos and 6 cents in damages and 25,000 pesos attorney's fees plus 500 pesos per court appearance was held to represent the monetary equivalent for compensation of the alleged injury. The court therein held that the total amount of monetary claims, including the claims for damages, was the basis to determine the jurisdictional amount. In another case, in Inigo v. Purganan, the court has held that the amount of damages claimed is within the jurisdiction of the RTC since it is the claim for all kinds of damages that is the basis of determining the jurisdiction of courts, whether the claims are for damages arise from the same or from different causes of action.